My name is Lee Perlman. I'm a consumer bankruptcy attorney. I've been practicing bankruptcy law since 1994. I've helped thousands of people in the state of New Jersey deal with foreclosures, wage garnishments, bank levies, and give them breathing room and a fresh start. Bankruptcy is not bad. There are a lot of myths in connection with bankruptcy. It's not, it's not the negative um, uh, stigma that it once was. Um, there are many people who will tell you, number one myth, bankruptcy, you're going to lose everything. In fact, in most cases when you file bankruptcy, 95% of the time, what do clients ask me? Can I keep my car? Can I keep my house? Can I keep my personal property? There are exemptions, which are um, fancy words for credits that an individual consumer has that allow you to keep most of your personal property. No one takes, disturbs, or interrupts your property in 95% of the cases. Bankruptcy will ruin your financial future. Also untrue. A typical bankruptcy has a shelf life of six months. You file. You have a hearing within a month. Two or three months discharge. The discharge is the conclusion of the case signed by the judge. After that period of time, that's an opportunity to rebuild your credit. You cannot get rid of taxes in bankruptcy. Also incorrect. There's a lot of misinformation about bankruptcy. Even CPAs don't know that if you have taxes that are more than 10 years old and file timely, more than three, excuse, forgive me, more than three years old and file timely, that they are dischargeable, includable in bankruptcy. You can get rid of them. So there are exceptions to that rule, business taxes, um, uh, taxes, uh, fraudulent returns, but typically standard 1040 taxes, your regular personal income taxes, if the taxes are more than three years old and your return was filed timely, you didn't seek an extension, you didn't get an offer in compromise, those taxes are dischargeable in bankruptcy. Very, very, very powerful opportunity to avoid the IRS from coming after you, garnishing your wages, levying on your bank account. People often think that even if you file for bankruptcy, creditors are still going to harass you. It's quite the opposite. Once you file bankruptcy, creditors can't call you, write you, sue you, garnish your wages, levy on your bank account. The bankruptcy is supposed to give you breathing room and fresh start. That's the purpose of the bankruptcy. So you can have an uninterrupted dinner. I was just talking to a client last week. They were taking their family um, to an event and creditors were coming through the Bluetooth phone. You have to remember that when you file bankruptcy, once the bankruptcy is filed, there's something called an automatic stay that's put in place, which means that creditors can't call right or soon. And if they do do anything like that, there's significant consequences to the creditor. They can be sanctioned by the court. They can be responsible for attorney's fees. So the stay or the violation of the stay is a powerful tool that a debtor's lawyer has in their arsenal to help enforce the consumer and the rights that they have under bankruptcy law. Only deadbeats file for bankruptcy. Not true. Most of the people who come to see me come to file bankruptcy for three main reasons. And there's a significant Harvard study that bears this out. Loss of medical insurance, divorce, interruption in income. Those are the three, main, the three main reasons people file bankruptcy. Loss of income, divorce, interruption in medical insurance, loss of medical insurance. So a bankruptcy can give someone breathing room and a fresh start. It's not deadbeats who file bankruptcy. People have a bump in the road and they need some breathing room and a fresh start. Another myth about bankruptcy is that you can file bankruptcy or you must file bankruptcy with your spouse. Also not true. You can file bankruptcy independent of your spouse. Now, your spouse's income is considered with respect to whether you uh, file a Chapter 7, where no one's paid back, or a Chapter 13, but you can file bankruptcy without your spouse. Just as their income is considered, so are their expenses. So let's say, for instance, a woman files bankruptcy without her husband, but the husband has child support and alimony, or he has tuition from a former marriage that has to be satisfied uh, on behalf of their children. Those expenses, even even the husband's credit card payments that he's making in connection with his budget, those can be included as something called the marital deduction in something called the means test, which is the calculation of whether you file Chapter 7 or you file Chapter 13. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. But my larger point is that two married people must not always have to file together. There may be situations where it could be beneficial for one spouse to file without the other. You'll never get credit again. Also not true. 
many years ago that may have been true, 15, 20 years ago. Now, after the discharge, the conclusion of the case, people will be able to finance a car. Most creditors want to see that you've gotten to the finish line, meaning you've concluded your bankruptcy. Have you received the court order discharge? Have you complied with what the court has asked you to do and have you gotten the discharge from the court? Most people get to that point. Creditors want to know that you've received the discharge, you will finance a car, you will rent a house after the case is over. Thousands of my clients over the years have done just the same. Everyone will know that you filed bankruptcy. Also not true. Bankruptcy is available on something called PACER, which is a court website that's mainly available to attorneys and to institutional creditors. You can't go on Google at this juncture and figure out who filed bankruptcy. Plus, it's not really newsworthy. What's newsworthy? Business bankruptcies. But personal bankruptcies are no longer published in the paper and it's not generally available information that you're going to be able to search for online. So when people say everyone's going to know you filed for bankruptcy, it's typically not true. Coupled with the fact that we spoke about that your credit typically will improve after you, your bankruptcy is over, those are important points. What does a typical credit score look like post-bankruptcy? I would say somewhere between 7 and 750 post-discharge, which is a pretty, pretty good credit score. Remember, the difference between a 500 credit score before you file where you have a car payment of $550 versus a credit score of 720 where you might have a $350 car payment is very significant. Will you have a bankruptcy on your credit report? Yes. Is the credit score the most critical point that most creditors are looking at today when they want to extend credit? Yes. What's your credit score? Did you get a discharge? On your credit report, do the creditors say, on the trade lines, included in bankruptcy? Or do they say 60, 90, 120 days? You want a designation on the credit report that says included in bankruptcy. Included in bankruptcy. That's the better credit designation that you're looking for at the conclusion of the case.